low on Ben Munchberger, and spiders are no longer the only things that can develop web. There are also human web developers, and web developers may seem like they have a boring or repetitive job, but it's actually not. It, um, sorry. it gets less boring with complex situations and problems every day within the code that make the job less repetitive than many things. Take sites like Gmail or Amazon, for example. It probably took a lot of time and a lot of people to create websites and specific details. That's what I want to do for my career. I want to be a web developer. Web developers code and design websites for companies and other specific clients. Many people believe that being a web developer is boring and easy, but that's not the truth. It takes a lot of hard work to figure out how to get specific details and figure out all the problems. The schedule for this career is pretty loose, and I can live almost anywhere I want. Also, I can work at home and wear clothing like this. Besides being a web developer, my other two career choices were to be a mathematician or a lawyer. These would be considered opportunity costs. Opportunity cost is the highest valued alternative that one is forced to give up in order to obtain the main preference. In this situation, my opportunity cost was a job involving mathematics, such as being a mathematician or a lawyer an accountant or auditor possible. What development would be of equal or greater preference? There are many positive incentives and negative incentives to a career as well developer. Incentives are things that influence you to make specific decisions. A few positive incentives of being a web developer is the enjoyable process of coding. I can live almost anywhere I want because most companies and places need web developers. I have an average level income so I can keep myself going in the money I a few of the negative incentives of being a web developer is the repetitivity of the job, because even though with the mentioned bugs and problems every day, it can still get a bit repetitive. The amount of sitting, because sitting for hours and hours at a time can get old or frustrating. And the process of dealing with bugs, because it can be very hard to solve. Good. With my career, I earn an annual salary of $52,000 and a monthly paycheck of $4,333.33. I want to live in Colorado, which is expensive, so I'll be spending $902 on housing. I want to own a decent and reliable car, so I'm spending $452.83 on transportation. I need gas, electricity, and other utilities for my apartment, so I'm spending $365 to cover those costs. I have four different taxes to pay every month, such as medical insurance and state income tax. So I have to pay $1,107.50 a month for that. I need food, so I'm spending $225 to eat throughout the month. And my medical insurance is actually paid for by the company I work for. So don't have to worry about that. I have $53,368 in school loans to pay off over 20 years, so $222.37 a month for this loan. I need soap, toothpaste, and other related toiletries, so I'm spending $45 a month to cover those costs. For discretionary costs, such as charity, savings, and entertainment, I am paying $1,013.63 a month. And a few notable relationships between mine and my parents' estimate in payments were in rent, which was a $500 difference, and in savings, which was a $300 difference. In both situations, my parents' estimate was higher, which I believe to be because their perspective of life and money would be different than one who would be just getting it. My budget can be divided into different sections that can be represented as percentages of my monthly earnings. I'm spending 27% of my monthly earnings on discretionary costs such as charity, savings, and miscellaneous items. I'm spending 21% on housing such as the cost of me having a place to live. I'm spending 10% on transportation which covers the costs of my gas fees and car payments. I'm paying 26% on taxes, which is money I pay to the state and federal government to help keep the money. I'm also spending 9% on utilities, such as gas and water. 5% is for food, so I can eat throughout the month. 1% is for school loans, such as paying for my previous education. And 1% is for toiletries, so I can stay clean and operational. Though the income is decent, there are many good things I had to trade for the better. These are called trade-offs, and they are compromises to achieve what you value. One of these trade-offs was extra money to put in savings, which I had to give up to live in Colorado because it's more expensive. I also traded extra money for a job I enjoy because I would prefer to be happy than wealthy. 
One more thing I gave up was a nicer car, because I would prefer to spend the extra money from that on a nicer computer, especially since my career involves a lot of computers. To earn this income at all, I needed a job first, and to get a job and be considered for an interview, I need a resume. A resume is constructed of my information, of my education, skills, experiences, and references. I will be attending Wichita State University because it's four years and can get me a bachelor's degree. It offers education in computer science and the tuition isn't too high. I need a bachelor's degree in computer science because it's necessary for one who wants a career in web development. The skills noted on my resume state that I'm organized, flexible, innovative, and able to use HTML and JavaScript. These are both coding languages. All of these skills would be important for one in this career in day-to-day -day life. In the experiences section of my resume, I stated I had been an intern at Kuhn Krauss, the agricultural machinery company, during my second year of college. While there, I helped the accounting branch of the company develop a website that would assist them in managing their finances throughout the company. One reference listed was Ben Proctor, superintendent of the Heston School District. I chose him because he knows me educationally and can provide a statement of any ability. Before any employer sees my resume, they will see what's in front of it, the letter of application. I've addressed my letter of application to John Short, human resources representative at SNI Technology. I've asked them to consider me for the position of web developer, stated why I'm interested in that position and how I feel. To find information about this career, I visited five different websites. The first was US News Money, which introduced me to more information about salary and budgeting. Next, I used the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which provided me with specific statistics about my career. Then I used the site All About Careers, where I learned more about the work hours and daily life of the web developer. Then I used the site Payscale to learn more about the future budgeting and salary of this career. And finally, I used the website Monster, where I received a job description and learned more information about the qualifications necessary for this. As for my articles, my first article I received from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it provided me with information and statistics about the work environment, what we web developers do, how to become a web developer, <coughs> job outlook, and similar occupations. My second article from the website All About Careers provided me with job description, and information about salary and benefits, <coughs> working hours, entry, and training information. So next time you go on sites like Google, Gmail, or Amazon, remember how long it might have taken to make it, who might have made it, and how it was.